Hey, what's up, everybody? Today I'm doing a review video on the new Voltrex Gallium electric shaker cup. If you've watched any of my other videos, you'll know that I am a big fan of Voltrex electric shaker cups. I've had this one for several years, and I got this one. They're one of their limited edition ones. And they just recently put out the new Voltrex Gallium, and they said, hey, man, we know you like our cups. You want to try this? And I said, yes, I do. So they sent this over to me and here is my review. I'm going to compare it to the original versions, which I love still to this day. Let you know what I think that they got right on this new cup and what they missed. And if I think that it's worth, uh, worth the money, by the way, right now, these are still cheaper than the original, the new one is. So, um, you know, certainly a good price, but question is, is, is it still worth it? Do me a favor, as usual, if you find this video to be helpful, please hit like on it, maybe the subscribe. I do these types of videos and other health and fitness videos several times a week. I'm also going to put Amazon links to both versions of this cup in the description down below. If you're interested, you can go down there and click one of those links. It takes you directly to the one you're interested in. So let's start the comparison between the new Gallium, Voltrex Electric Shaker Cup, and the original. So you're going to notice that the two cups look different in size, but in actuality, they are both 24 ounce cups. It just so happens to be that this one is a little shorter and fatter. The other version, the earlier version, taller and thinner, but they do hold the same amount of liquid. But there are quite a few different uh, different things between these two that I actually like better on the new Gallium and maybe some stuff I still like better on the original. So let's talk about first the design of the cup overall. I prefer this bigger, fatter cup. I'm a big guy. I have large hands. So for me, holding something like this that has a little bit more weight, which I'll talk about in a second, I actually prefer the feel of this. I never had any problem or complaint about this, but I never noticed it as I held it. It's just a lightweight. They're both, both made of Triton plastic, both BPA free, but this just feels like a cup, whereas this one feels like it's got a little meat to it. In fact, whenever I weighed these just like this, the new gallium comes in at about 12.55 ounces. The original version, the older version, is about three ounces less. So it definitely, uh, even though they hold the same amount of liquid, definitely more has gone into this build. One of those things is the lid. If we take a quick look just on the outside of it, you'll see obviously the new gallium has a giant carrying hook, which for the record, I love. I never carried around the original by the hoop. It just, it's silly and small. I'm not sure what I'd even really do with it. But this one, I have used this one all week long and I have carried it almost the entire week with that. So massive upgrade with this. The other thing is the lid is a screw lid, which I actually prefer. The original versions are the pop lids. They, now listen, see, I don't know. They, now they do a really good job. Some cups lose that ability to be able to uh, snap properly. The Voltrex still gets that right, but I just prefer the easy screw on and easy screw off. Part of the reason there is sometimes this is so tight that whenever I go to pull it, it actually pulls the entirety of the lid off, right? It actually pull the lid off of the cup because it is so tight. Works good, sometimes a little bit too good. So the, the lid from a locking perspective, I like better with this. Something else to mention here is it's got a rubber uh, like a grip around the edges. And that's because this lid is hella tight to put on. I, sometimes it's almost like too tight. Now look, if you're trying to avoid leaks, that's what you want, right? But there has been a few times where I'm just like, man, I feel like I'm working really hard to get this lid on. But that's why they put this nice rubberized grip around it is because it is a tighter lid to make sure of no leaks. The original, I've never had a problem with it leaking, but there is no sort of grip. It's just the plastic as you would expect. Now, let's talk about the base. So with these electric cups, if you haven't seen, they typically have a base like this that detaches. This is what you charge, and that's also the, the power button that actually spins the agitator, which is located inside of here. Quick demonstration, if I put this on, click that button, cool lights and everything, right? So you detach this and and charge it. Now, one of the reasons it's been great to be able to detach this is because it, it keeps it away from moisture. If I need to clean this cup, this allows me to get it wet in every sort of variation, every sort of way, and not worry about possibly getting into the electric, like the charging port or even through the buttons of this. This is an electric base. I don't want moisture near it. So that's one of the perks of the detach there. Um, then you can clean this as you need to. The new gallium went a different direction and I it had a good idea behind it, but it's got a couple of downfalls. So one, you still detach the base as we did on the other one, but what you're gonna see here is this actually now pulls out the agitator as well. Again, this one, the agitator is still in there. We only removed the base, this removed all of it. And in fact, 
It's a hole now in the bottom of the cup that you remove the entire bottom of the cup. So the reason that he did this is because there's been a lot of questions of, well, how do you clean this part down here? It's hard to reach. How do you clean around it? It's easy to clean. You just put some hot water and some soap and you run it through a few of the cycles, the spin cycles, and I've never had a problem with it not being clean. But this solves the problem probably in a more efficient way, which is simply remove it so you have access to clean it as you would now. But here's the problem. Whenever you do that, you're getting this top part wet, which means you're getting it awfully close to the possible electronic components that are located inside of this base. Now, sure, the electronic charging port on this one has a nice little cover, but if you've had very many electronic things in your life, you know that sometimes those lose their elasticity and may not stay in place. And they also seem to have made the actual button, the power button, it looks sealed. It looks like water can't get in there, but it puts it very close to the risk of potential moisture damage. It also makes it so that like, you got to make sure that this lid on is tight down here at the bottom. You got to make sure that it is on uh, all of the way. I'm doing this backwards. Um, because if you don't, again, possible leakage at the bottom of the cup. Has some problems there. So you have to make sure that this is on there tight or else if not, that liquid's going to come right down here. So I think that the idea behind it was awesome because they tried to address the issue of being able to clean the agitator. But what I don't like about it is that if I pay 20 bucks for this cup or however much it costs at the time, yes, I can clean it, but I don't want to run the risk of possibly moisture getting to it or whatever it is. So that's the build. One other thing to maybe mention on the cup itself, let me put this back on here, is that this version of the Voltrex, if I show you up close from a measuring standpoint, for ounces, it only had like 6, 10, 14, and 18. There wasn't a lot of measuring opportunities on there. And sometimes you had the measurements, like this is ounces and this is milliliters on the same side. It was just a little bit confusing. They solved that with the new gallium. It just has ounces on this side, milliliters on this side, and several, like 4, 6, 12, 16, and 20. So much easier to measure. So very quickly from a build perspective, which one of these do I like better? I like the gallium. I like the gallium not just because it's new, but because it's thicker, because I prefer that type of grip. I prefer the lid. I prefer the hoop. I like that it is a tighter lid, even though sometimes it's annoying. But the only thing that I don't love about this is that by removing this base, it possibly uh, puts it into risk of moisture damage. But they did seal anywhere that water could get in, so we're going to hope that that holds up. Um, one other thing maybe to mention here as well as I'm looking at it. Notice how the agitator on the original version goes almost completely to the sides of the cup. That's for two reasons. One is it's just a wider agitator in general, but the cup is also thinner. So from a spinning perspective, it's almost getting everything in that cup. If we look at the agitator here, let me see if I can find a way to show it to you. There we go. It's a wider cup, yes, but it's also a not as wide agitator. So the question is, when we test this, can it get the powder that's located along the edges? Now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna fill both of these cups up. We're gonna put some liquid in both of these, put some protein powder in them, and let's put these to the test. At the end, I'll put them through a filter and see which one was able to mix most of the protein powder. So let's do that now. All right, so I've got both of these filled up. I'm doing 12 ounces in each. And just to kind of show you, see if you can see the liquid level, 12 is here, and I've got it filled to the 12. Hopefully you can kind of see that. I'm kind of trying to swirl it a little bit to, so you can see the 12. Now, because the measurements are a little bit strange on the older version, I filled it up to just after 10 because there is not a 12 on this one. So I put it right about where I thought 12 would probably be. So I'm gonna try to make them as equal as possible. That way we can do a good measurement here. I am using Muscle Tech. This is the Nitro Tech Whey Protein. It says for two scoops to use 12 ounces of water, which, dun, dun, dun. So we're gonna put this thing to a really good test and do two scoops. Now something to mention, and I'm gonna show you just there's been a couple of conspiracy theorists on my page lately <laughs> saying I'm not testing correctly. So there's one scoop. Whenever you do these electric cups, always do the liquid first. If you put the powder in first, it will compact at the bottom when you try to add your water on top. There's my second scoop for this one. And uh, it will cause the agitator at the bottom not to spin properly. So always do your water first. So we move over to this next cup. That's a little too much. Get off there. Scoop one, and, th oops. and then scoop dose. All right. 
All right, second scoop going in. So you can see it's just kind of floating up there on the top. Move this to the side, put the lids on both. Always put your lids on these electric shaker cups whenever before you start them, because what happens is whenever you start these, it creates a vortex type of action, which actually pushes the liquid up a little bit higher on the cup. So even though the liquid's only right here now, once it starts to spin, it's gonna actually push everything to the sides and make it rise just a tad. So I always put the lid on. Again, this one's gonna be a little tighter because that's just how they made it. No leaks, but harder to, harder to spin. That's why that rubber thing comes in super handy. All right, so, and the other thing I also do is I also go ahead and take the lid off before I start these. Um, this is because I don't want any sort of weird pressure to build up, especially whenever I do like pre-workout powder. And then I pop that lid and everything goes spewing out. So both of them have 12 ounces of water. Both of these have two scoops. I'm actually gonna go ahead and I'm gonna have a timer set up here so that way people can see that I am keeping true to the timer. I'm actually just gonna hit it now. This is hard to do with one hand. So I'm hit there. Uh, where's the button? Okay, there's that one. All right, and here's that one. Both are spinning. Can you see that? I'm gonna speed this up. There's a couple of things maybe to mention here. It looks like we've got some powder residue here at the top of this cup here. Uh, I don't see, there's a little bit maybe here. I wanna make sure most of it will typically end up around the bottom, so that's what we want to avoid. I don't see that, maybe a little bit here on the newer cup, but let's do this. We're gonna put these both through a strainer. I'm just gonna pour it out. Let's see how much unmixed powder is in both of these. So let's do that now. All right, it's not fancy. This is my strainer. I'm just gonna put this on there. Let's go ahead and pour this out and let's see how it does. All right, so first let's look into the cup. So, I mean, if you're talking about the liquid itself that came out of that, I mean, I'm trying to kind of, so you can see through it. It is, there's a little bit of residue there, but minimal. I mean, you can almost see through it how little there is. Now, as far as, is there a left any, er, sorry, any left in the bottom of the cup? Let's take a look at what's actually in the cup that may not have gotten mixed. So you got a little bit here, right there, that was all concentrated up and clumped up on the edge. But if you're looking at the bottom, again, sorry, it's kind of hard to see. I'm trying to show you with the light as I spin it. There's nothing really at the bottom at all. Most of it that didn't get used was up here at the top. And typically what'll happen is, we, whenever I do these shakes myself, before I actually hit the button, I give it just a little like manual shake as I set it down just to try to loosen up. I didn't do that this time because I wanted it to be like a really good test. Let me clean this off. Let's compare now what the gallium was able to do. All right, so we're back to square zero with that. Let's pour in the, I'll try to do this again so I don't make a mess. Let's see what it was able to do. So, how did this one do? Well, pretty similar to the other one. I mean, there's a little bit of something there at the bottom. It's still kind of dripping here. And I guess maybe it's a little bit hard to see without a ton of light, but like, I can see through that film. So the question is, is did it mix the liquid? Did it mix the powder good? Yes, but let's take a look inside the cup like we did last time. Let's see if there's anything weird going on at the bottom of the cup, like some hidden, hidden clumps or anything like that. Inside of this cup, we kind of see what we saw on that last one, which was around the top edges where we had put a lot of that powder. You see a little bit there, but at the bottom, there's not a lot of clumps, not a lot of anything. So it looks like the gallium has done just as good of a job on mixing as the original one did. Um, almost the exact same job. I was a little bit worried about maybe the smaller agitator not working as well, but uh, it did good. Again, a lot of the stuff, the residue here at the top will typically be taken care of as soon as you put your liquid in and your powders before I start it. I just give it a little bit of a, -a little bit of a shake at the top, something like, you know, like, and then I drop it and then I hit it. So um, that's the full comparison. Let's do a quick wrap up here. All right, I made a mess pretty much in general, but what are my final thoughts on the new Gallium Shaker Cup from Voltrex? Um, 
I'm for it. And I'm a little bit surprised I'm as for it as I actually am. I had several concerns about it at the beginning. I, I like the build, but I was concerned about the agitator specifically on how well it was going to be able to mix without actually being able to reach as far at the bottom. It did just as good of a job as the original Voltrex did. I've got, I still have liquid in here, so I'm trying to be careful. Uh, I love the build. I love the build better than the original here. I never had any complaints about this, but they took a couple of things into consideration that I think people complained about on the original and fixed those. I like that it weighs a little bit more. It feels like a more sturdy, uh, better, higher quality cup. And um, so, yeah, I am just as much a fan now of the Gallium as I am the original. They have this in several different colors. I got the orange or red. I'm not sure what this is, but they've got others to choose from. And actually, right now, at least, it's cheaper on Amazon than it is um, the, than the original is. So I don't know how long that's going to last. But yeah, Voltrex Gallium, uh, another excellent shaker. I actually did a blog article over on my website, fizznashiznas.com, of the best electronic shaker cups on the market. I'll link to that down below if you want to go and look at the entire ranking and reviews that I did over there. And by the way, Voltrex is still number one on that list, but it looks like I'm going to have to add the gallium over there to that too. So uh, thank you to the Voltrex people, by the way. I never told them that I'd give them a positive review. I just told them if I liked it, I would do a video. They did send me this for free, but in no way, shape, or form was this linked to doing a positive review. But I think that they know that I know that I like Voltrex enough that it would be hard for me to not like something that Voltrex is putting out. So that's it. Thanks you all so much for watching. Again, links in the description down below to both the original version, which I highly still recommend, especially maybe if you have smaller hands, that might be for you. And of course, I'll recommend or I'll link the Voltrex Gallium now as well. That's it. Thanks you all so much for watching. I got a protein mess I got to clean up. So that's it. See you on the next video. Peace out.